Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Workers' Day and happy new month. And thank you for joining us. We apologize for starting seven minutes after four. We apologize for starting seven minutes after four. Uh, we just wanted to allow other participants join, but hopefully um, as we as we commence, others will join us. Um, thank you, Ogogo, for joining us. Thank you, Omolola, for joining us. Thank you, Esti, for joining us. Um, okay, so thank you again for joining us. We expect other participants to join us. Um, so it's a very, very special business conversation um, series on mastering the business of your talent with Mr. and Mrs. Steve Harris. Um, this event is powered by Education Consulting, a business management consulting firm that provides training courses, business acceleration programs, recruitment solutions, general HR sourcing solutions, as well as local and international business strategy retreats um, for top, middle, and uh, low management staff. Um, my name is Antonia, Business Development Manager at Education Consulting. Uh, my job here today is very simple because I know that uh, we're, we're excited to meet with our speakers. So the very first thing we will do before we bring up our speakers is to introduce ourselves. I have introduced myself. And I would like for us to, um, you know, tell us your name, your profession, and where you're joining us from. You can either use the chat room or just simply unmute and introduce yourself. So we get to we get to meet one another. Well, since everyone is waiting to bell the cat, then I'm going to stop first. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's an honor to have you here. My name is Steve Harris, and I used to be the CEO of Education. Um, somebody has planned a coup d'etat and removed me from office, so I'm no longer the CEO. I'm now the chief resource at Education, so it's an honor to have you here. We're glad you could take some time off your busy work as day holiday and schedule uh, to, you know, get your questions answered. It's going to be very interactive. It's going to be very, very practical. Um, it's just about an hour, so we're not going to keep you. So please make sure you utilize this opportunity. Ask questions. Don't, don't form. Don't be quiet. I, we are here to answer as many of your questions as possible. I can't wait to get started, and thank you for joining us. Okay, I can see. I I, th I think some. I think that um, Antonia's signal is a little bit muted. So um, Shola says, "Hi, Shola. Um, you're a marketing communications professional joining from Lagos. Super stoked to have you here." Um, Antonia, are you are you back? Is your signal okay? Because we lost you for a moment. I think we lost her now. Either way. Um, hi, Omolola. Events and catering service joining from Lagos. Fantastic. Glad to have you here. Um, Dee, over to you. Yeah. Hello. 
Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know if you can all hear me. Uh, my name is Emma Steve Harris. I, I think uh, we should just see if uh, Todia is back on so that she can continue with the other and then we can stay, you know, according to the plan, the time and the schedule. So Tonya, if you can hear me, please unmute and, and then continue. Yes, I apologize for the next one, Hitch. Um, that one. Um, thank you, Mr. Steve Harris. It's an honor to, to have you here. Um, so just before Network threw me out, I think I saw Shola Ton Tunnel. I hope I got your name right. Thank you for joining us. Um, I see Omolola. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Raymond, for joining us. Right, so without taking so much of our time, um, we'll dive right in. But before we do that, I would um, introduce our speakers. I'll quickly read their profile. I know some of us know them already. Some of us have done businesses with um, edu education consulting, but we will still read their profile. Uh, before going to the profile, uh, just like Mr. Steve Harris said, it's a 45 minute session. Um, 30 minutes will be for the speakers, and then we'll have 15 minutes QA. So um, we're free to use the chats, see questions, or simply raise your hand, and you'll be given an opportunity to speak. All right, so the first speaker is Mr. Harris. A lot of us know him already. Um, so Steve Harris, fondly called Mr. Ruthless Execution, is a leading high performance management consultant, business coach and author with experience uh, with so many years experience. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Education Consulting, a United Nations Young Ambassador for Peace, and a trusted authority in the fields of life coaching and business strategy. Steve has profiled on Yahoo Finance, Forbes Africa, The Economist, Slate Magazine, and he's been frequently listed as one of the world's top 100 business coaches to follow on Twitter. He's a, he's a certified member of the International Coach Federation, a member of the Life Coaches Association of Nigeria, the American Association of Small Business Consultants, Texas, USA, and the International Certified Consultant Association Canada. Through his consulting interventions and business acceleration programs, Steve Harris continues to impact thousands of businesses across the world. Okay, so that's the profile of our first speaker. And then, I'll quickly read the profile of uh, the second speaker. So the second speaker is Mrs. Steve, Steve Harris, Immaculate Steve Harris. She's a process management expert and a Six Sigma champion. She's an associate member of the Nigerian Institute of Management the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development and a member of the American Society of Administrative Pro Professional. She has over 15 years experience in business administration, international recruitment, consulting and process management. She has worked with and consulted for various industries, including oil and gas, automotive, fintech, fashion, real estate, consulting, to mention a few. Immaculate has designed, managed, and facilitated several culture transformation and process management interventions for several organizations. She's also known as the structure queen. 
She has introduced many of her clients to the importance of building proper business structure and systems into their business, which has generated incredible value to not only the effectiveness and corporate productivity of her clients, but also to their organization's bottom line. She's the chief operating officer in ed education consulting and the chief executive officer at Administrate USA. Um, so at this point, please join me as um, I welcome both of them on stage. Over to you, Sar and Ma. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, you can call me Ima. And of course, I'm doing that coup d'etat thing. I'm going to speak first and leave the best for uh, after me. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you, everyone, for taking our time to be here. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you could join us today. This is something we just started uh, because we feel that we should connect with um, people that we work with. We should connect with uh, individuals in organizations that um, we've worked with or who are potential or prospects. And that's why we are here. So um, today, the, the topic of this um, meeting is mastering the business of your talent. And, I, and I'm sure there are people here who are career people who will be saying um, business of your talent. I'm a career person. Now, uh, using HR lingo, when we hear talent, we're talking about high performers. And so you can change it as a career person to mastering the business of becoming a high performer. Uh, what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to use the case study of the course uh, Mastering the Business of Your Talent. So originally, Mastering the Business of Your Talent is a signature course to one of our um, um, training programs on another company, that's the Steve Harris company. And so it has done phenomenally well. And, you know, the name has resonated over time. However, what I want to do is to use my experience as a process person and as a human resource person to drive this, this um, mastering the business of your talent success um, home and to see how you can use it also uh, in your career. So that's what I'm generally going to do. So um, first, Mastering the Business of Your Talent started as a physical event where um, people will be in a, in a um, hotel uh, meeting room and then we'll have speakers coming with Steve Harris as the main speaker. And I've been honored over the years to, be, to work on the operations and the back end of um, Mastering the Business of Your Talent. So over the years, we've seen, you know, from that physical event where we saw people coming and they're in the meeting rooms and we, we noticed something that people began to ask to say, oh, why is it done for only people in Lagos? And then, you know, people started asking, is it possible for, you know, us to, for you to have this training outside Lagos or in other places? And you know the good thing, and the good thing about me being in the process management um, space is that I'm always trying to see how we can do things better, efficiently and effortlessly. So we began to ask ourselves the question, what does the customer want? This time from process management point of view is actually the voice of our customer, which is most important. And for you, a career person, you might be saying, um, who is my customer? And for us, our customers were the people coming for the training. For you, your customer, if you're a career person, is your supervisor and your organization and the people you work with. So we're, we, were, we were beginning to hear our customers say they wanted more. They wanted it to be in their location. Now, we can't be at all the locations at every time. So we decided, okay, you know what, let's make it available. And what, what motto can we use to make that available to everybody everywhere in the world? So we decided to take it online. And we take, we're taking it online. We realized that more people could come and they could have more time and they could get their questions answered. But now what happened is everybody wanted their questions answered. So we went to another stage where we had more people and we're making more profit. However, 
people wanted all their questions answered. No, it began to take a toll on Steve Harris, who was who is the major facilitator and the major convener of mastering business of your talent. So some people would say, oh, we want to speak with Steve Harris, but uh, maybe he doesn't have enough time to talk to us. That's their coming up. We listened again to the voice of the customer. What do they want? They want that whatever they paid for, they're able to go through the course and they're able to get someone answered their question. So we moved again to another step. We decided with um, Steve Harris, he trained um, lead coaches Sorted, we looked for coaches who are good in their field and in business. And he did a train the trainer session. Um, he was able to incorporate them. So what happened is as much people come, uh, that means we'll have more coaches. And then the people were grouped, and so he, they could he they could the coaches could also answer questions. So what happened is everybody's satisfied. They can have the mastering the business of your talent court, the course. They can have a coach to answer to. But again, people were not kind of ginger. So they were coming to do the work. They were coming in, but nothing was measuring their output. So we began to measure that output with the coaches. We'll take, you know, what they brought in, like what they made the previous month. And we'll look over it over time for the six weeks of the um, coaching period to see exactly, you know, what they made over time. That way we're able to track their performance. I'll take it back again to somebody who is in, in the career field. So um, with, with you, you might be looking at, okay, what is the voice of the customer? Like I mentioned, if you were you have your supervisor, yes, but you also have your company's objectives. What is your company trying to achieve? If you knew that, you would know what the company wants from you and you'll be able to do more. Look for um, different people, for instance, for organizations and organizations like us may be looking at you know, more customers, better experience, profit, but you as an individual, you'll be looking at increased visibility, promotion and recognition, and then rewards. So um, what you need to do is to actually find out what the voice of your customer is, what your company wants from you. Also, you can find that during annual general meetings. I, I know that people here who don't even know you know, you work at a company, you don't know how well they're doing. You don't know the next objective for the next um, few months. You don't know that. But if you want to set yourself up to actually grow, if you want to master how you can become a high performer, that's retain that high performer status over time and even increase it, then you need to be listening to what your organization is saying, what they want from you, what your supervisor is saying. Now, you know, forgive me, I'm not saying kiss ass, no. I am saying position yourself in such a way that it almost looks like um, there, there can be nobody else like you. That's that's what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm coming from the point of strategy. You cannot be in an organization and you have no strategy to position yourself as the best, that position yourself in such a way being seen and you're being heard and you're being groomed for stages higher. And I'm not saying be in the organization and think of being the MD. I'm saying no, think of a few steps ahead. And that's what we did when we thought of, okay, what's the next step? Get it as an online course. What is the next step? Get coaches in. What is the next step? So always have your strategy as to what the next few steps are. Also ask for what, you know, in the next year, what you want to see. And the good thing especially with process management, when we create processes, we test it to see if it's working. If it's not working, we re-strategize. Now, when you as a career person have created your strategy and you've looked at six months, something is wrong, you're not being noticed, you're not being called upon, you are overlooked for promotion, then the next thing you need to do is sit back and look at your strategy and reevaluate. You've tested it, it didn't work, you've missed, you've missed something. Get back to the drawing board and see how you can strategize and make sure that you know, you're meeting exactly the target that you want for your career. And so I'm just going to say, to me, what is most important is take a few steps Create the strategy, re-strategize if necessary, and ensure that you're putting your best foot forward at all times. So let me 
uh, move on to inviting Steve Harris to talk. We want this to be very interactive, so we don't want to bore you with too much talk. We want to give enough um, room for um, questions and answer. And like Tony had said, if you would like to speak live, you can also um, raise up your hand and you'll be called to ask questions. This, we hope, we're hoping that this will be fun for you and fun for us. Like anything we do in education, it has to be fun. Even when it's a training, we want to make sure that the impact is amazing. So um, let me invite our um, chairman of education uh, to come take it to another. And guys, this guy, not that I'm married to him, but I know that he is the best in his field. I can say that because I, I'm I'm very, I don't listen to everybody and um, not that he's my husband, but he's intelligent. And I'm sure that something you will learn from him, inclu including the strategies you will learn will help you. So let's welcome Steve Harris. Um, thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I paid her to say that because she promised, <laughs> she made me promise to, <laughs> to give her money if she said nice things about me so she said so many nice things about me and um um can we please you know show her show her some love for all the amazing things that she shared because she's incredible at business structure and everything um so hi hi everyone thank you so much for joining us and we really do appreciate you taking the time to be here um i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you a story and I think that that's what I'm going to do to, because I find that stories tend to resonate a lot more. So I'm going to tell you a story. I had a meeting several years ago with um, a now former bank MD, all right? Um, but that bank MD at the time was um, Aiki Mokwede. Now, for those of you who perhaps may not be familiar with the financial institutions, he used to be the... MD chairman, I think he's still chairman of Access Bank, right? And, but at the time we, we met him, he was, I think he was, uh, they had taken over Access Bank, they had taken the bank from one billionaire loss to one billionaire profit. And this was maybe the third, fourth, or maybe fifth year because we had to do some cultural transformation for them where they wanted to, I think, 10X their, they, they had a goal, I think they wanted to 10X their revenue, something like that. I can't remember. Um, so myself and my team were called in to be a part of this culture transformation project. And we're having a session with um, Aigi Mokwede and Herbert Wigwe, who is now the MD of Access Bank. And at the time, we asked, you know, what would you say is perhaps the significant secret to your success? What would you say is the secret to your success? And he said to me, you've got to learn how to trade letters of offer. I'm going to say that again, and I'm hoping that, you know, I know that most of us here are entrepreneurs, we're entrepreneurs in employment. So this is going to be valuable to you. So he says, you've got to learn how to trade letters of offer. And so we asked what he meant. And so he gave a story, he shared a story, which I now want to share with you. So he gave an example that when he was a guarantee trust bank, because many people don't know that Aiki Mokode and Herbert Wigwe um, started their careers in guarantee trust bank, GT Bank today, or GT Co, I think it's called. And they started all the way from entry level, entry level. And by the time they left Access Bank, they became executive directors. Now, please note, at the time that both Aiki and Herbert became executive directors, the position did not exist in Guarantee Trust Bank. I'm going to say this again. At the time that I and Herbert, both of them, who started pretty much in the same induction class, entry level, by the time these guys got to the top of the, the food chain, the position called entry level did not, um, executive director did not exist. Now, in Guarantee Trust Bank at the time, um, they had hired, I can't remember the name of the consulting firm, whether it was um, KPMG or one of those guys, they hired them to do a, an assessment on their leadership team, and they recognized the Guaranteed Trust Bank was top heavy. And top heavy meant that they had a lot of heavy hitters, big boys, who were making so much money, but it seemed that the bank wasn't moving forward because they had so many superstars at the top. So they needed to make it lean. 
And so they decided to get rid of, I wouldn't use the word get rid of, they decided to just part ways with many phenomenal individuals at the bank, some of whom included um, Femi Pedro, who at one time became the deputy governor of Lagos, um, some other amazing individuals whose names I will not mention just because of time. Now, when they got rid of these guys who were general manager directors, they recognized that Ig and Herbert were too significant and they couldn't let them go. Therefore, they created a position called executive director and both of these guys became executive director. Now today, the position of the executive director is all over the place, but back in, back in time, and I'm talking about 17, 18 years ago, this position did not exist. So now these two guys become executive director. Now you ask the question, how do two guys go from entry level in the same bank, right? To now rise to becoming executive director. And I said, they learned how to trade letters of offer. So now my story begins. So he shared with us how, when he was in GT Bank, there was a particular government contract they were trying to get. And it seemed to be, impossible because Guarantee Trust Bank has a reputation for ethics. Now, um, that is their reputation. So ethics and, you know, integrity and stuff like that. That was the mantra of GTB because then they had guys like um, Uncle T, uh, Mr. Tayo Adirinokun, who, who is now a blessed memory, who was the founder um, of, um, you know, Guarantee Trust Bank, Fola Diola, some guys like that. So they had this government contract that they wanted to bid for. And apparently this government contract was only available to seven banks. Now, that, this was around the time that the central bank had made a ruling that Nigeria's banks must consolidate. So now, if you remember, if, you, if, you, you know, if, you're, if you're not as old as I am, because I have all this gray hair. But if you remember, there was a time in Nigeria where we had about 87 banks. And then the central governor came and he decided that, you know what, Nigeria's banking system is too wide, but not deep. So we need to consolidate. And he did the first banking consolidation, which merged. So, so several banks were merged and acquired to have 25 banks. So this was before this time. So there were about seven banks. Um, out of these 87 banks, the federal government was only going to give seven banks the license to be a part of this contract. Now there were 87 banks at this time. Now. I had been tasked with the goal, so to speak, of closing and getting this deal. So he went to Abuja and he's at this minister's office trying to lobby to get the deal. Now, all the time he's at this minister's office, he never gets to see the minister. Each day he comes, the secretary says to him, minister is not around, he can't see you, blah, blah, blah. So she was always gating him. And you know, you've got to recognize that in every organization, they're gatekeepers. Now, the gatekeepers may not necessarily be the, be the most celebrated or be the people with the best title. The gatekeepers may be a driver, but that driver knows the heart of his boss. And if, you, if you're able to get the driver, you're able to get the boss. It might be a secretary. It might be a PA. So you've got to recognize in every organization, you've got to ask the question, who are the gatekeepers? So I goes into this meeting and he tries to see the minister. He keeps going day on day. The secretary is just bouncing him. and. Again, you know, GTB has a policy, integrity, so they can't bribe, they can't promise you any of those things. They have to do things by the book. So, of course, at the time, the government was like, I beg these guys don't play ball. Go and bring money. Other guys are bringing money. The highest bids will get into this deal, right? And so they have a policy. Now, what do you do when your organization has a no bribe policy or no gift policy, but you want to be able to get the deal, right? So it's very interesting what happened. So Ike says after about six or seven days of going every day and staying there from morning till they close without seeing the minister. Now understand this, this guy's an employee. He was not executive director there. I think at this time he was a senior banking officer, right? And he's going day by day, right? And he's not seeing the minister. Other people would have just been like, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, what's that? I forgot call your office and say, they're not giving me chance, you know, I, I can't get in and leave. But he was there day by day. Now, after a couple of days of being there, eventually he happens on a conversation that the secretary is having. So she's on the phone. And this is when GSM just came out. So she's on the phone standing by the window. If you remember, if you're not too young to remember, right? There are times that in order to get good signal, you have to stand by the window, okay? Some of you are too young to remember this. That's why I have all this gray hair. So she's standing by the window and she's having a conversation with who someone who happens to be her son. 
And she was like, what do you mean you haven't gotten this money? But I've sent it since. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, no, I've sent it since. So I listens very intently to the conversation. And the lady hangs up and she's angry. She's visibly upset. So I says, ah, mommy, what's the problem? She said, who's your mommy? It's like, mommy, calm down. What's the problem? All you bankers, all of you are the same criminals. All of you are criminals. He's like, mommy, calm down. What's the problem? She said, I have a son who's schooling in the UK. And he lives in a very um, central area of London near his school. And the, 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 the accommodation he stays at is very, very, it's highly in demand. Now, every month I pay his rent, right? And I sent it through Western Union. Now, this is when Western Union was, you know, pretty much the only way to send money abroad. So I've sent it through Western Union. Apparently, the bank hasn't sent it. And if he doesn't pay his fees by today, he is going to be evicted. But I've sent this money since. So she's just vexing and, you know, throwing fits and she's upset because she knows her son is about to lose his accommodation and might be homeless. So I says, mommy, don't worry about it. Give me your son's name. Give me your son's phone number. Give me your son's address. She's like, what are you going to do? He was like, mommy, don't worry. Just give me your son's name, his phone number and address. All right. So I leaves the room, goes to goes outside, you know, the, the, the office, goes to stand by the window. And he calls a friend who happens to be in the UK and says to him, these were his exact words, beg, borrow or steal. I need you to send this amount of money to this boy at this address. I need you to go there. And when you get there, tell him it is from Aig Imokwede Guarantee Trust Bank. Tell him it's from Aig Imokwede Guarantee Trust Bank and tell him to call his mother. So he tells the guy, make it happen, right? Now, don't forget, Aig is not MD. Aig is not any of those things. He's a senior banking officer. So he's leveraging off the relationship with someone he knows in the UK to go the distance, to make this delivery, right? To drop this cash with this boy and tell the boy to call his mom. Right. So I now knows that it's just a matter of a waiting game. So he sits back and he's waiting for um, his, the boy to call because there's an instruction to call his mom. So long story short, the boy calls his mom and says, mommy, I've gotten the money. She says, ah, how did you get this money? What God can know does not exist, even though that's not what she said. Right. How do you know? You, you, how did you get this money? And she and he says, that someone came to give me the money. He said his name is Aigimokwede from Guarantee Trust Bank, right? Now, Aig is sitting in the office just chilling, like, you know what? So she hangs up and she says, you, you, what did you do? And he says to her, we're Guarantee Trust Bank. We guarantee that, that we look after our customers. So she now says to him, interesting, she says to him, so what do you want? I don't understand. He has been coming day to day. And now, only now she's asking, what do you want? What can I do for you? So he says to her, mommy, you know, we're trying to bid for this thing. She said, hey, but you people don't give money. He says, yes, we don't give money. She says, okay, don't worry. Go, I'll sort it out. He was like, for real? He was like, she was like, no, don't worry, go, I'll sort it out. Now, you know how government agencies, particularly Nigerian government agencies are. Um, they're lobbying, they're bringing files, but the secretary is the one that has the power because she's the gatekeeper. So when it just so happened that when the minister's people will come to lobby and they would bring the bids of, you know, um, people who are put, projecting their, their bids, right? She noticed that the list was being compiled. So she said to the minister's people, my bank is not here. <laughs> They said, what bank? She said, guarantee trust bank. I said, mama, leave those guys. Those guys don't play ball. She said, okay, no problem. Bring the file. I'll give it to the minister. So she takes the file and she puts it in a drawer and locks it. A day later, two days later, the guys who are lobbying come. Mama, how far? The minister hasn't treated our file. She said, I told you people now. My bank is not. She was an evil woman, apparently, because I, I was doing the accent. Um, should be, I told you people, my bank is not on this uh, list, this different, this list, right? And they were like, Mama, which bank? She said, Guarantee Trust. Mama, these guys, those guys don't play ball. So, okay, no problem. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to the minister. 
a couple of days later, because don't forget, these guys who are lobbying are being pressured by the banks who have dropped money and like, guy, how far, what's going on? So they're putting pressure on the lobbyists and the lobbyists are trying to put pressure on the secretary, but the secretary can be put under pressure because my bank is not on this list. You know, go, <laughs> you know, I think I've said more evil today in my, than in my, my entire life. Right, she said, my bank is not on this list. They're like, mama, these guys don't play ball. Long story short, because that thing, that file was in her cabinet and they can't submit it without her. Inevitably, inevitably, it sounds crazy, they put GT Bank on that list. And that's how Guarantee Trust Bank got the contract for that deal at the time. Now, here's my point. When I get that contract, now this is how you trade letters of offer. And you can, you can use this knowledge in your, own, in your own career. Because again, don't forget, yes, you are working at whatever company you're working. But don't forget that this is the age of talents, like Ima said, this is the age of talent. So mastering the business of your talents, understanding your talents and how to master it and how to use it for business. Because inevitably, while your organization must benefit, you also must benefit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you've got to think about yourself as a consultant to your organization, as a consultant to your company, so that you can trade letters of offer. So long story short, I guess this big deal is incredible, right? Now, here, guess what? Other banks now know that there's this guy who has been able to get this deal. Now, if you know, most of us are Nigerians, right? Most of us know that customers really don't, are not so loyal to the bank. The customers really are loyal to their favorite account officers or favorite bankers. Generally, most of us have a favorite account officer. Every time you go to the bank, you can call your account officer. There's someone you know. In fact, your favorite banker might not even be your account officer. Like I have several bank accounts, and none of my bank my, none of my account officers are my favorite people. If I need to get something done, I'll never call my account officer. I'll call someone I know, and that person will get it done, even if that person is not my account officer. Now, these guys know that, oh, I can secure this deal but we also want to be able to get deals like this. So in order to get the deals that Ike has, we need to get Ike. Do you get what I'm saying? Because if Ike moves, all his clients will move with him because they like him, right? So you've got to understand that relationship capital. Long story short, they come and they'll make Ike an offer and they say, okay, what level are you? He says, well, I'm an SBO. They're like, okay, you know what? We will give you one step higher. Now, now it's a lot longer, but many years ago, this is about 17 years ago, between entry level and executive director, which you really can't predict, right? It used to take about 25 years. If you went promotion year upon year upon year, it would take you 25 years. Now in Nigeria, it will probably take you like 70 years because they're not even promoting that way anymore. But here's my point. So they would meet I and say, okay, what's your position? They'll say, I'm, an, I'm a senior banking officer. So they'll say, okay, great. We'll offer you assistance manager if you come and work with, let's say, Sky Bank or this other bank. He says, fantastic, great. And I have a letter of offer, right? So they say, fantastic, no problem. So they write him a letter from, let's say, Sky Bank and say, we're pleased to offer you a position with Sky Bank as the assistant manager of Sky Bank, this division. Ike takes that letter and calls HR and says, HR, I have a problem. They're like, what problem do you have? He says, Sky Bank, I'm using Sky. Sky Bank has made me an offer. They say, what's the offer? He says, assistant manager. They say, can we see the letter? So I forwards the letter to HR. HR, recognizing that I is an asset and they can't afford to lose it because if I goes, the money in the bank will follow him. Therefore, what do you think that they're going to do? the least they will do is to match the offer. So they would say to I, okay, you know what? Um, we're going to match the offer. We're going to make you an assistant manager. I says, fantastic. Can I have a letter of offer, please? They print the letter of offer, email it to him. I now has a letter of offer to say that he is now an assistant manager in Guarantee Trust Fund. I takes the letter of offer and goes back to Sky Bank and says, Sky, I'm so sorry, I can't work with you because my bank has matched your offer. If Sky Bank wants him more, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to 
give him a better offer. So they will offer him deputy manager. Ike takes the letter, calls HR and says, I have a problem. Guy, which problem? They've made me deputy office, deputy manager. They've made me a DM. Now, as so on and so forth. Now, don't forget, because now, do they want Ike because Ike is so fantastic? Not necessarily. They want him because of what is attached to him. Right. And I remember the conversation. He said it, it wasn't just, you know, hypothetically Skybank that wanted him. Several other banks wanted him. And it became a bidding war. Right. But each time he chose, because he chose to stay in Guarantee Trust Bank, because he wanted to be at the very top. And eventually he left Guarantee Trust Bank as an executive director. And then they bought um, a bank that used to be called Crystal Bank. And then they now, you know, got another one called Access Bank and so on. And the rest is history. So I'm done, but this is my point. <laughs> Irrespective of the organization that you work in, the most important thing that your organization wants is to see that you're valuable. And I define value because you know how it is, everybody, every Tom, Dick, and I'm not going to say Harry because my name is Harry, so you can't use my name in vain. But every Tom, Dick, and put your name there, <laughs> let's just see. Every Tom, Dick, and whoever, um, says on their CV, oh, my design, my objective, you know how it is where you, you copy and paste CV. And now with chat GPT, it's even easier, you know? So you write, oh, my desire is to work in a high-flying organization where I can add value. You know, you use all those buzzwords. Now, what is value to a CEO like me? Value, and please write this down if you can. Value is the vacuum that is created when you're not there. I'll say it again. Value, your value is determined by the vacuum that is created when you are no longer there. So what does this mean? If this webinar, for example, as we're holding it, if I'm not here, a vacuum has been created because you guys came to hear from Steve Harris and Immaculate and so on and so forth. If a random person logged into this webinar and decides, mm, I beg, what are we talking, and leaves, we will not notice. The person's vacuum does not make a dent. So my point is, in your organization, you've got to get to, to that place where you deliver so much value that when your organization thinks about you leaving, it rattles them because they know you're not just going to leave. They know that certain accounts may leave with you. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. Or certain clients will leave with you or the organization can't seem to function because you're such an incredible asset. And that, my friends, is how you can master the business of your talents within an organization and the core secret is to learn how to trade letters of offer. And you can only trade it when you are valuable. And you're only valuable when there's a vacuum, there's a loss, there's a hole created in the system when you're not there, right? You've got to remember that at the end of the day, with all your skills, your giftings and talents, you are a consultant working with an organization. And you, can, you should always be in the market. And I mean no disrespect to say, if I asked you, and I'm not going to ask you because I'm not trying to embarrass anyone, but when was the last time you were headhunted? Not that you applied for a job. Do you get what I'm saying? And I mean no disrespect. People who are, I, I, I want to say this. Can I say that? I'm going to say the way I want to say it because I think I'm going to offend you, which is okay. Um, most people who don't have great value, and I mean this, I mean it's, I'm not trying to say that you don't have great value, right? But most people, most employees end up applying for jobs because they have no proof of value. Most of the people who have the greatest proof of value are headhunted. So here's my question to you. When last were you headhunted? When last did an organization come to you and say, please, where, what are you, we want to have you. Not that you applied, but they saw what you were doing. They heard about you. Like the Bible says, your fame spread abroad. They heard about you and made you an offer and said, please, how much do you want so that we can have you? 
if you're not being headhunted, you are not yet mastering the business of your talent in your organization. If you have to keep applying for jobs and your organization doesn't even stand that you're applying and you're leaving, they don't care. Like, okay, well, I just got a new job. Hey, yeah, congratulations. God bless you. Okay, bye. And they're not trying to keep you. Do you get what I'm saying? Let me give you one analogy and I'm going to say, I'll, I'll end with this. We all have a mobile phone. See this fine girl there, this fine girl, she's my own, right? She's the speaker, she's my studio. But we all have a phone and our phones have signals, right? Our phones have signals. Now I'll use this metaphor. There are three types of signal. There is no signal, no signal. There is low signal. And then there is high signal, no signal, low signal, high signal. How do you know you are in demand? What's the difference? Very simple. If you have no signal, it means your organization is not trying to keep you and the competition is not trying to get you. Did you hear me what I just said? You have a low signal in, your, in the marketplace when your organization is not trying to keep you and the competition is not trying to get you, you have no signal. Number two, you have low signal when your organization is trying to get rid of you. <laughs> and so your organization doesn't mind you going but the competition doesn't want you. The organization is willing to let you go, but the competition doesn't want you with them. You have low signal. Do you get it? Your organization is willing to let you go, but nobody really wants you. You have a high signal when your organization is doing everything they can to keep you and the competition is doing everything they can to get you. Did you get it? Can I say it again? High signal, your organization is doing everything they can to keep you and the competition is doing everything they can to get you. So when you think about your signal from this perspective, it will give you clarity to say, how valuable am I in the markets? What is my currency? What is my signal strength? Do I have no signal? Do I have low signal? Or am I emitting a high signal? With these few points of mind, I hope I've been able to convince you and not to confuse you. Thank you very much. You see what I said? You see what I said? I said his, I saved the best for last. And you know, the thing you said about high um, performers, um, high signal people, I found out re um, recently that many clients, when they want to recruit, they actually send us names of people that they want us to head hunt. So I know that high performers are in high demand now. So if you're not a high performer, or if you're trying to get there, I think, I feel like everyone should work harder to place themselves at a better um, place or a better opportunity where people, um, organizations from outside, they're actually recommending recruiters to go get them. That's that's what I'll add to what he has said. But uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, you see what I live with. It's such an amazing talent. Tony, I wear it now so that we can, if you have questions, please um, raise your hands or put them in the chat so that we can take them and then we can quickly round up. Thank you so much, Mr. Steve Harris. Thank you, Mrs. Steve Harris. What, what a remarkable, phenomenal session. Wow, how many of us enjoyed that session? It was short, but very powerful, thought provoking for me. I'm sure we enjoyed it. And I'm sure we have questions because we, we need to be able to trade um, 
letters of offer, we need to have high signal, we need to be valuable indeed, and we need to be able to master the business of our talent. So the floor is open. If you have questions, you can either use the chat room or simply raise your hand and uh, you'll be given an opportunity to speak. Okay, while, while we're waiting for people to ask questions, let me ask um, Steve Harris a question. For people who you know, are not high performers now, um, what would you advise them to do to get better? Um, I think you should surround yourself with people in your organization that already are high flyers. Um, you've also got to find what your organization considers as valuable. You know what I mean? Because ultimately you, you want to be indispensable, right? So I'll give you an example. Um, in every banking consolidate, in consolidation or in every organization where your business wants to cut costs, there are certain people they can't fire. And most in generally, they can't fire the guys bringing money. So if, you're in an org if you are in an organization and you don't know how to market, you don't know how to sell, you don't know how to bring money, you are at risk of losing your job, right? I remember banks then, they would fire hundreds and thousands of staff. Operations staff usually were the first to get fired. Customer service, all those guys just got fired, right? And then they either got fired or they told them, you have to start, they started giving them a budget. You have to bring in money. So you would see people who were customer service, like, oh, I've never, I, I don't know how to market, that's your business. Because the most important thing to us is bringing in money. So my point is you've got to ask yourself, how can I move the needle? How do I bring in business to my organization? If you can't do that, you are going the way of the dinosaurs and you might become extinct inevitably. Thanks so much. We have a question. We have a question in the chat room. Um, so the question reads, talking of high performance, I think, so this question is from Mazi Adedayo Ogunkoya. He says, talking of high performance, I think the environment also matters. How do you become a high performer in a toxic organization? I'll leave that to the experts, the CEO of education. <laughs> okay, so there's there's something I, I always say, if, if an environment is toxic, then you should be looking for a way out of there as quick as possible. Um, however, there's also something that also looks like it makes an environment toxic, which is office politics. And a lot of people think that maybe because of Nigerian politics, they probably think office politics can be dirty. Now, for me, what I believe is office politics helps you position yourself to be seen by people who are in charge. So even if a place is seemingly public, can you begin to align yourself with people who will be able to recommend you when they are thinking of um, somebody to take a leadership position or somebody to be promoted? Just It's just being strategic identify people who, because even if it's toxic or abusive, there will still be people who, you know, are strong enough to, you know, they're, they're actually not as, what will I say, what word will I use? They're not as bad as the environment is. There's still some people who are better or manageable. Align yourself with those people, but ensure that those people have the capacity to move you up the ladder. However, my advice is it's not best to remain in a toxic place. And if you think that it's too toxic, then begin to find your way out of there. How, or otherwise, if you can remain there or if you're still there, learn to play politics with the right people with the right people on your side and you'll see yourself move up. Again, also do the work right. Also be, um, be valuable. Don't just be there and like imagining the place is toxic and not doing anything like it's the best place that you've worked with. See, excellence speaks for you. Uh, I've been somewhere, it was toxic, 
when I did leave. And two years after, when somebody called me out of the blues and said they wanted to recruit, and the MD of that toxic office said, the only person who has ever recruited for me and the people stayed is Ima, so talk to her. Remember, I found myself of that place, but I kept working as though it was the only place that I had to work. And that put me in the MD's mind that even two years after, I was still getting recommendations from there. So it may be bad, it may be crazy, but keep working, make yourself as valuable as possible. One person somewhere will recommend you for promotion or even for uh, employment somewhere else, but just make sure you're doing the work no matter what. If I could add one one thing to that, make sure you're not the toxic one. Um, because the truth is, you know, when you have body odor, you're usually the last to know. Mm. It's other people around you that just, oh. you know, if you're oh. if, if Jiga, you're you're usually the last to know. It's just when you open your mouth, you just notice that people are backing up. You don't know why they're back. So you think oh, they don't like me, but it's because your breath stinks or every time you get into the environment, they become uncomfortable and they want to leave. So you're usually the last person to recognize that you might be toxic. So make sure you're not the toxic one. Do a personal inventory, ask mm -hmm. for feedback. So before you point at somebody else, remember you've got four, three or four of the fingers pointing back at you. So do a self-assessment first, mm -hmm. right? Ask yourself, what am I bringing to this organization? Do people like me? How helpful am I? Right. Once you've done that self-assessment and you've and you've done that 360 assessment from other people in the team, and they can tell you categorically how they feel about you, and, they, you, and then you know you're not toxic. But the first step is to make sure you're not the toxic one. Yeah. Good. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much um, for that wonderful response. Um, Okay, so we're still expecting more questions. It's, um, I think it's a rare opportunity to have uh, Mr. Steve Harris join us in this conversation. Um, and I, it will be nice for us to maximize this opportunity to have him here to be able to ask as many questions as possible. Um, I have a comment. Okay, there's a question here from Raymond. He says, thank you very much for this wonderful session. Please, would this recorded session be available for review? Um, yeah, it will be available. Um, we'll have it on our YouTube channel. So we're doing many new things. We're going to start up a YouTube channel, and this is one of the first videos that will be there. So. And in the next few days, just look out for us on YouTube and you'll be able to get this recording there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, we still have five minutes for questions. We still have five minutes for questions. So if you have a question, please feel free to use the chat room or raise your hand. So while we wait for questions, I'll just read the comments here. Um, from SD, he says, or she says, thoughts provoking and Thank you for the comments. Time to share. Thank you for um, your comments. And um, from Kochi, I did with a love emoji. Thank you for enjoying the session. All right. So we're still waiting. Okay. So from Raymond. Um, he says, also, how can we connect with you? How can we learn from you? And how can we enjoy more insightful session like this one? Okay. Mr. Steve, this um, is for you. Okay. Okay, so uh, I would say first, uh, um, like I mentioned, this is the first that we've done, we're ever doing. 
And uh, we intend to have more of this uh, monthly at least. Um, also, uh, there's uh, uh, education consulting on LinkedIn, but most and generally we have Steve Harris on LinkedIn as I am Steve Harris. And we also have him on LinkedIn at on Instagram at as at I am Steve Harris. I'm also on uh, Instagram at Ima underscore SH and also on uh, LinkedIn as um, Immaculate Steve Igoro. So uh, you can find us there. But generally, we have your information and we're sending you um, information um, as time progresses. But of course, we'll say, look, I know that we are the best. I'm not going to say one of the best because I've been in some rooms. We are the best at what we do. And if your organization will need to have trainings, consulting, business strategy, um, events, we're always, always readily available. I know that some of our, our clients' representatives are here, so I'm sure they can uh, actually, um, they can actually mention that we're one of the best at that. So um, that's one of, I mentioned our, our handle. So well, of course, um, your emails are there and um, we'll reach out to you. Uh, as much as we can. Over to you, Tonya. Thank you very much. So in the absence of um, no questions, I'd like for you to give us um, most your yeah, final words, and then we call it a day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, like we said, um, become the high, become the high performer, and you'll reap the re reward of being, um, being a high performer. Create strategies around becoming better. Check what your network signals are, and if it's low, please ensure that you're working to increase it. Surround yourself with the right people, and choose education for your business um, trainings and. Um, um, retreats and all of that. I'll keep saying like team education for life. Dear Harris, over, over to you. Um, I, I'd say thank you so much for, again, taking time off your incredibly busy schedules um, to be here. Thank you for investing in your advancements. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that the mistake that many, uh, many employees make is that they wait for their organizations to train them. Um, you've got to train yourself. You know, your organization may not see your personal vision. Only you see your personal vision. So you must invest in yourself. So don't limit your growth to when your organization sends you on trainings. Invest mm -hmm. in your growth. It's your growth. It's your personal life. It's your signal. It's like having the phone and you say to yourself, well, I'm going to wait for my, I'm going to wait for my organization to charge, charge it so that my signals will be strong. No, you will look for a charger and charge yourself because it's your life. It's your signal. So please take personal responsibility for your growth. And um, remember that you may not always reap where you sow because there are organizations that you have, you have been faithful and you will be faithful and they may not be faithful to you. Mm -hmm. So you've got to remember that you may not reap where you sow, but you will reap what you sow, right? So make sure you're sowing the right seeds that you're going to reap, all right? And thank you for hanging out with us. And just like my boss said, um, I, I stand to correct her. We are not one of the best. We are the best. Every other person is, we've taken, you know, we're not like number, you know, we're not just number one, we've like we're number one, two, three. Every other person starts from number four. So if you want an experience that is unrivaled, um, give us a call and we'll love to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. And have an awesome day. Thank you. Thank you so much to our, to our speakers. I have really enjoyed myself and I'm sure it's the same with um, with the participants okay so we have your details and uh, going forward we will always um, send you newsletters we'll send you our uh, training courses uh business you know everything we do we'll go to center 
so that together advance and ourselves to the organization and um, to the society at large. Thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful day. And um, you would hear from us as soon as possible. Thank you. And bye for now.